Hello and welcome again as we continue our reading of the Gospel of John. We've started in chapter 1 and we're up to verse 35. This is the first disciples. Um, this section, of course, as with much of John, has no um, parallel in the other Gospels. Te ep arion. Now, here you've got te, and it's not going with anything, so there you have to supply hemera day. So, on the following day, uh, again, John stood. This is from the verb histami. This is, it's perfect in form. Hestaker is the perfect um, I stand. And the, this is the past tense of this one, so stood. So John was, was standing there. And um, we get ectone methetone out of duo. And two, literally out of his disciples. So two from among his disciples. It's a kind of partitive genitive here with ek. So on the following day, once again, John was standing there and there were two of his disciples, Kai M. Blepsas, and looking upon to Yesu, uh, this is the dative, of course, of Jesus, dative after the M, N in M. Blepsas, and looking at Jesus, and then he's in the dative, so the participle, peripatio, is the verb, this is the dative present participle, Walking, or walking around, lege, historic present, he says. Ide ho amnos to theu. Behold, imperative from adon, uh, from horao, aorist adon, and the root is id. This is the strong aorist imperative. Behold, the amnos to theu, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples... A Kusan heard him speaking. Now verbs of hearing, correct when they're used correctly, take a genitive of the person um, being heard, and an accusative of the thing which is heard. So this is the correct usage here of akuo is the verb, taking a genitive here. So the two disciples heard him speaking, and Akolutheosan from Akolutheo. This is not a passive, this is from akolutheo, akolutheo, so we're getting a lengthening of the epsilon there to form the aorist of this verb. So the two disciples heard him speaking and they followed Jesus. And Jesus straphase, this is from strepho and um, we get a vowel gradation. This is actually an aorist participle, but it's being used as aorist passive participle, and it's being used more in an active sense of having turned, having turned around. So Jesus, having turned around and beholding, we've seen that verb several times now in John, and looking at them following, he says to them, historic present again, what thing do you seek? Question. And they said a pan, it's normally a weak aorist, uh, sorry, a strong aorist, a pon, but you do get the weak aorist endings as well as we're getting here. This is typical of later Greek, and you'll even see it in earlier Greek too, the confusion between weak and strong aorists. So they said to him, Rabbi, now, John here has to translate this, which is said, participle, um, this is a, a participle from meth hermeneuo, being interpreted, so literally which says being interpreted didascale teacher. So he has, feels the need to translate this into, from um, Aramaic into Greek. So, so um, they said to him, teacher, which when it's interpreted, means, you translate here, but the Greek says, says, means teacher, pu menes, where are you remaining, where are you staying? 
slightly different use of Minnow here. Where are you staying? And he says to them, historic present. John, like Mark, is fond of historic presents. Urkes their kai opses there. So this one is an imperative, and this one is not. So urkes there, you lot come, it's you plural from urkamai. Kai opses there is probably not an imperative, but just you will see. Horao is the verb and the future is opsomai. So come and you will see. They came, again we're getting a, a, a weak aorist ending on a strong verb as we did up here with the apan. They came therefore, and there's another one, a, it's normally a don, but here we get a dan, and they saw where he was living. And Emanan, they remained parato beside him, accusative of the time um, at which so during that day. Uh, it it was hose with a number means approximately or about. Decate is ten and or tenth and horror hour. So it was about the tenth hour. Um, and there was Andreas, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, one from the two who were hearing uh, Acrosantes, or who had heard um, from John, uh, and of those who had followed him. So Andrew um, and Peter... Um, Simon, sorry, uh, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who had heard from John and had followed him. Again, this is a, quite different to the um, recruiting of Andrew and that we see in the other Gospels. In there, of course... Um, Peter and Andrew are uh, doing their fishing and Jesus comes along. Here, it's Andrew is said to have been one of the disciples of John and has been sent by John to follow Jesus. Now, the previous bit is Huriske. He finds historic presence, so we say he found proton adverbial at first. So Greek will use neuters of the adjective in an adverbial way, either singular or plural, neuter. Here it's singular, so proton at first. So he, he finds at first his, his own brother. Idios is one's own. So he finds first his own brother, Simona, that's Shimon in um, the Hebrew tongue, uh, and says to him, Hure come in, that's like the famous saying, Hureka, I have found, this is Hure come in, we have found, that's the perfect from Hurisco, the Messiah. And again, John has to translate that for his audience. So, which is being interpreted, present participle, Christos, the well, the anointed one. Uh, Ag again, they brought him, that is Simon, to Jesus. Emblepsos auto, this is from emblepo, so it's looking at him, it's almost looking into him. Jesus said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Kephas which is an Aramaic name, which is interpreted Petros, Peter. So again, John needs to translate um, the, the name. Well, we have some more disciples then called. Again, Te Eparion, supply Hemera, on the following day. A Thelesen, this is from Thelo, 
you learn in New Testament Greek the verb is stello, I wish. In earlier Greek, it was originally ethelo, and so when you formed the past tense, that lengthened to an eta here. But by the time you get to the New Testament, the e in ethelo has gone, and you just get thelo, but this has become fossilised in the past tense. The, the old epsilon reappears in the past tense. So on the following day, he wished ex elthane from ek and the elth root from erkamai, aelthon. He wanted to go out into Galilee. And he, present, um, historic present again, and he finds Philippos. Now that's, of course, a Greek name, lover of horses. And Jesus says to him, Akoluthe moi, follow me. That again is an imperative. It's akoluthe e, and the double epsilon contracts to epsilon iota in the imperative. Philip was apo from Bethsaida, from the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip historic present finds Nathaniel, now that is a Jewish name, and says to him, now Hon, we have to again, Greek often doesn't put the antecedent, it just uses the relative pronoun, so it's the one whom Moses, Egrapsin, wrote, understand, about, in the law, and the prophets we have found. So we have found, goes with this hon, we have found that one whom, or about, or in respect of whom, Moses wrote in the law, and the prophets understand also wrote about. Uh, Yesun, the, Jesus, the son of Joseph, the one from Nazareth. And Nathaniel says, said to him, um, is any good thing, it's a question, so um, is any good thing able to be from Nazareth? So can anything good come from Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Urku kai ide. You get two imperatives there. Urku is from Urkamai. And this is the middle imperative, because Urkema is a middle verb. Uh, so, come and ide, see. Again, it's that id root from Adon. And the weak, sorry, the strong aorist imperative, epsilon here. So, come and see. And Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, participle there, agreeing with Nathanael. And he says, regarding him, Behold, truly, this is an adverb, an Israelite in whom dolos ukestin, there is not any guile. There is no falsehood. Dolos is falsehood or guile. Deceit. Um, and Nathaniel says to him, From whence do you know me? So from where? This is pothen, it's the old uh, ablative ending then, meaning from, and then the pot for potty, so from whence do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, um, pro to followed by an infinitive. This is the use of the articular infinitive with, with prepositions, which is very common in Biblical Greek. And so it's before, and the subject goes into the accusative. So it's before Philip uh, heard you. You can't translate the to, it goes with the, with the infinitive. So literally it's before hearing, before the hearing, Philip, you. So before Philip, well, perhaps called you here. Phonio is to, to call, sorry, not hear. Uh, yeah. So before Philip called you, um, I saw you, Adon, set onto being under the fig tree. 
So before Philip called you, I saw you being I saw you being under the fig tree. And Nathaniel answered to him Rabbi, that is teacher, uh, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. With quite emphatic Sue here, because you don't need the Sue with the A, that's just the second person from Amy. So you are the Son of God, and you are the Basileus, the King of Israel. And Jesus answered and said to him, Hotty, because and it's a question so something like is it because or rather the main verb is here pistuase do you believe because I said to you that different uses of hottie here this meaning in the sense of because so do you believe because and this means hottie here means that do you believe um, because I said to you that I saw you Pupacato underneath Tes Sukes the fig tree. Opse is second person uh, from the from the future of Horao. Horao Opsomai Opse is the second person. You will see. I might just say something about that here. So the the future is Opsomai in the first person and opsetai in the third person and originally it was obsessi that was the original form of the second person you see it sort of makes sense opsomai obsessi opsetai opsometha and so on what often happens in the course of the language especially with sigmas the sigma drops out the epsilon and the alpha combine to give you an eta and the iota goes subscript giving you this form i know it looks like a dative of a verb or something but it is actually second person um, singular of the future of the verb horror to see it's one of those irregular verbs you have to learn the principal parts so you will see um, uh, greater things and then genitive of comparison two tone than these so you will see greater than these things and he says to him he starts present amen amen lego who mean it's a very common phrase in john truly truly i say to you there's that obsess there again from that same verb we had up here you will see the heaven any oik gotter now this is a perfect participle it's from the verb anoigo and this verb is very complicated unfortunately in greek and was even from an early stage it was originally a compound from ana plus oigo or oignumi but over time people had forgotten that it was a compound uh, and sometimes they augment the beginning this time they're augmenting in here but they're doing a double augment so they're augmenting this into that and then they're whacking in another epsilon as well and then it would normally be your normal endings are cos queer cos but before a guttural the kappa disappears so you get os otos for the endings and this is otarts the accusative so this is the perfect uh, participle accusative singular agreeing with uranon meaning uh, having opened so you will see the heaven having opened and the angels of god and then another participle greek loves its participles anabinos to go up catabino is to go down so ascending and descending literally upon the son of man lots of theology there but i leave that to the theologians and the commentaries for you to to read here we're just going through and trying to make sense of what the greek says and that's the end of chapter one